Good. Oh, now it's alarm time going off on the automobiles in the parking lot. That's just to give a little announcement for the Wiley Drake Show starting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Wiley Drake Show. My name is Wiley Drake, and I happen to be the host of this show. And uh, it is being sponsored by two organizations, one from Washington, D.C., called the Congressional Prayer Conference, of Washington, D.C., and the other, Crusade Radio from California. We're live here with you tonight, and we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. I put out a little video earlier about the fact that we have some exciting days ahead. Today is an exciting day, and uh, we're glad to announce to you another victory for Jesus and the good guys. You see, the Bible says very clearly that if we are to resist the devil, and we should, but if we resist the devil, then he must, according to Scripture, flee, that is, run away from us, not toward us, and not be a part of us. So, we had a victory today because um, we prayed and shared and planned on having tomorrow as a special day of prayer and fasting. That's on Thursday. And then we had a special boots on the ground, prayer in the air, prayer effort for Friday. The reason for Thursday was is because it was Thursday and because we believe in prayer and fasting. You know, it's interesting to me that every time Jesus talked about prayer and fasting, he always put them together. It was not just fast or just pray. He said, when you pray and fast, do it this way. Our Roman Catholic friends have given us a thing that they call the Our Father. Jesus gave that to us when he said, when you pray, pray like this, Our Father, which art in heaven. And that's how we are to pray. We have a caller on the line. When that bell rings, that means we have a caller. And callers can come on the line and pray with us and share with us. They are not obligated to identify themselves. And we'll talk more about that later. But uh, caller, are you there? And if you have a prayer request, please share it with us. Yeah, pray for our brother Ken and uh, brother Paul Hanson. Well, I... Uh, Certainly will and already have. In fact, we had a victory today. I was just sharing with our audience because we had already planned to have a special prayer meeting tomorrow, a prayer and fasting meeting for Kent and the other fellow, Mr. Hansen. And so we had already planned that prayer and fasting for tomorrow. And the devil don't like it when we pray and fast. And we had also pre uh, prepared and set up for a boots on the ground prayer in the air prayer meeting on Friday. The one for Thursday was just to pray and fast overall. The one on Friday was to not only pray and fast in general, but in specific because on Friday the 2nd, that is the day that the court, had moved uh, the hearing and had moved the new pretrial hearing uh, over to Friday, and we had assumed that it would be the normal hour, 8 o'clock, etc., there in uh, Central Standard Time. And so we planned to put the boots on the ground, prayer in the air, at 8 o'clock Washington, D.C. time, which would be 7 o'clock Central Time, and so that's what we had set up. Well, we know the devil don't like it when we pray and when we resist him. And so we were going to be resisting the devil big time on Friday. And so he had to flee. He and the courts had set up the pretrial hearing for 8 o'clock in the morning. Pastor Kent Hovine called us today and told us that the devil had indeed fled he was fleeing. 
Now, he didn't flee very far because he's a stubborn old fool, but he did flee. Instead of having the hearing at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, they're moving it down to 2 in the afternoon. But that, to me, was a victory for Jesus and the good guys because it just means the devil wasn't ready for Friday morning. And so they moved it down to Friday at 2. And it would not surprise me. I don't want to say this too much because I don't want to show the devil our hand. But it wouldn't surprise me for them tomorrow, sometimes around 1 or one thirty, to decide they're not quite ready and to ask the judge for another postponement. But in the meantime... Even if they postpone it, we're going to start tomorrow morning at 8, I mean, yeah, tomorrow morning, as well as Friday morning, at 8 a.m. Washington, D.C. time. That's 7 a.m. Pensacola time. And so our boots on the ground and prayer in the air will be full bore uh, tomorrow and Friday, and anyone is welcome to join us. Caller, you just call in on that prayer line number. That number is open right now to our Congressional Communications Channel. That channel will be open all during this show tonight, and we will take prayers from callers. And tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Pensacola time, 8 a.m. Washington, D.C. time, we will open this prayer line again. Now, caller, you call in on 712 712- 432-1690, and then you put your access code 399-430-POUND in, and I want to ask you if you will do me a favor, as the prayer chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference, would you lead us out in prayer as I and others uh, agree with you in prayer? Would you lead us in prayer, please? Amen, my dear brother. Thank you for leading us, and we do agree with you by praying in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And I learned a little bit of Greek and Hebrew when I was in seminary, training to be a pastor, and I learned very quickly that the name of Jesus in the Greek language and the Hebrew language was Yahshua HaMashiach, and we pray in that name as well. We also found out that from the scripture that uh, God was called not just God, but God was called Yahweh. And so we pray in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach to Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and to the Holy Ghost and to the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are continuing to pray and to think about these fellows as they're fighting the fight. Here are two very godly men that have been brought before a very ungodly court. We have an ungodly judge that is absolutely illegally there. She should have recused herself a long time ago, but she is stubborn and vicious and vile, and we are praying against her. I sent a uh, fax to her telling her that we were praying imprecatory prayer from Psalms 109 verses 1 through 10 for her and we're asking God to bring that about in her life. Uh, Caller, if there's anything else you'd like to share uh, or ask or whatever, go right ahead. It's an open line and you have the microphone. Well, that uh, uh, the scripture that comes to mind to me is Proverbs 12.10 and that's the tender mercy 
mercy that the wicked is cruel. Hmm. Yes. Amen. Yes. Do we? You have... know, it's... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, is there any other caller on the line that would like to share anything? Please feel free. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to be ladies and gentlemen on this line. When we talk, uh, we want, uh, obviously, for you to come in when you can. Let us know. You're welcome to identify yourself, but you don't have to. You can tell us where you're calling from, but you don't have to. This is an open line. This is prayer, and uh, we come before the Lord. Lord, I come before you tonight thanking you for this dear caller that called in, this gentleman, and I pray that you'd bless him and use him as he continues to act upon his prayer uh, to put into effect what God has told him to pray. And I thank you, Lord, and I offer up his prayer as my prayer and indeed offer it up as our prayer. All right, anyone else want to share, pray, or do whatever the Lord lays on your heart? Go ahead. for joining us. If you would, please hold on. We have a gentleman on the line that's talking a little bit about some of the technical things in the trial that's coming up, the pre-trial. Go ahead, brother, and share. Wendy is in the wings. Wendy is our newest correspondent on the Wiley Drake Show, the family correspondent for the Congressional Prayer Conference. So, Wendy, if you would, just hold on a minute and listen, and then we'll give you a chance here in just a moment. Go ahead, brother. This is a critical case, as well as a, uh, for lack of a better term, a confusing case. I remember back in 1997, uh, this is my sort of personal throw in this thing. In 1997, I was charged with the same crimes that Kent Hovind was charged with, and I was facing not eight years, but six years in jail. But fortunately, I got a good judge, 
and the judge ruled in my favor, even though I was found guilty by the jury, the judge ruled that he would give me community service instead and then counted all the service that we had done as time served. Now, I say all of that to say is it's very complicated uh, what happens. In our case, for example, there were 11 charges against me, six of which should not have been brought against me because they were for uh, violation of permits in the city that had, they said, not been applied for even before I became the pastor here. But at any rate, there were six of those 11 charges that had to do with those permits, and we found out the night before from a city employee that uh, those permits were indeed applied for, and they got that record for us. Now, I say all of that to say that uh, because the prosecutor had the first go the next morning, he asked the court to dismiss six of our charges in the interest of justice. And what a tragedy that was because that made it look like uh, they were being Mr. Nice Guy, and they weren't. Uh, we would have said the same thing, but we didn't get to go first. We had to go second. So I say all of that to say this becomes a technical uh, minefield. You just are weaving around trying to figure out what to do, and that's what our brother was just sharing with us. And uh, anything else you'd like to share, brother? Well, the, I say now's the time, and I have seen it in the last three to four years, where uh, people of good faith standing out on the front lines, getting the rest of praying on the sidewalk, rescuing the babies, uh, speaking out against injustice. Amen. All over the place. And, you know, it just, now is the time to rise up and to train ourselves in how to do court briefs and how to make a stand, understand what the legal process is. Don't be duped like a lot of these lawyers, or attorneys, I say, yeah. go to uh, school and they, and they learn the law that they are taught, but they are not taught common law. That's they right. are taught law of equity. And other laws that are out there, they're taught the statutory laws. But once a court paper uh, uh, opens up another court, we're talking about the court of records. The court of records, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, Fifth Edition, says that you have the power to find the whole attempt to court and to jail. Mm -hmm. And those videos are out there. You can you can not, you can start. Training yourself, you know, they're 15, 20 minutes, half an hour videos. And uh, if you're training your child by homeschool, I recommend that you teach them how to do litigation. You teach them how to understand uh, the right and the wrong process of going into court. It's not a matter of if you'll go to court. It's a matter of when you'll go to court. Well, you're absolutely right, my brother, and that's why tomorrow on our program we're going to have a group that has come on board with us, uh, and the name of their group is called Litigation Logistics Incorporated, and that's exactly what you're talking about is the logistics of litigation. Not that you have to be an attorney, but that you have to learn the law and know what to do. And... We have Wendy on with us right now. She has been fighting a terrible case, and uh, sometimes I'm sure she just feels like saying, what the heck, I just give up. However, tomorrow we're not only going to have the uh, litigation and logistics people on with us, but we're going to have a gentleman by the name of Jules on with us. I think Wendy knows him, and he is a man. he is a man who has fought the fight, and I'm sure he felt like giving up over all those years, but he didn't give up. He kept fighting, and he won. So you're going to hear a case tomorrow about a man who fought the system and beat the legal system. Uh, Wendy, I believe you know him, right? I do know him. Um, we met on um, one of the Facebook groups. Um, he 
he wrote, uh, We Have Your Daughter. And um, my first um, debut article in the whiteoutpress.com that I wrote, um, U.S. Uh, parents call upon the World Court to investigate DCFS and uh, CPS is the title of the uh, article. And I mentioned Jules in there about his book. And um, I didn't get his book yet. Something happened in the mail. But I'm going to read his book and I'm going to um, give him a review on Amazon about it. Um, I, I read like a sneak peek of it on Amazon. And it's amazing that the coincidences we have, I mean, we have Orange County, California, and Calvary Chapel, and Chuck Smith, and Laguna Beach, like, all these things in common, and then, um, long behold, you know, our children are, are stolen from us, mm-hmm. and, you know, it did take him eight years, but with, with the rise that is coming up, we're at a threshold of a revolution here, I just feel it with, like, every fiber of my being. Um, Amen. The way it's coming up, our, 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 our children are coming home soon. Yeah. It, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yeah. Well, you're absolutely yeah, right, Wendy. God and for us. Who could be against us? <laughs> Amen. And that tomorrow we'll have Jules on here with a book. <coughs> Excuse me. Yay. So I'm so excited to meet him. I'm like I'm like like a, like a high school girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to meet him too because, um, ladies and gentlemen, I have been. Let me just give you a little scenario. Uh, I have been fighting this fight for over 20 years here as the pastor and the director of a sanctuary for families and children who are fighting the system. And I've been, uh, I've been criticized, I've been sued, I've been arrested, I've been shot at. Uh, my dear friend, Nancy Schaefer, was not only shot at, but shot and killed, along with her husband down in uh, uh, Georgia. And so, folks, this is a war. This is not just some little philosophical argument that we've got. My goodness, we've paid the price, many of us. And Wendy, of course, has paid the price uh, with losing her children. Uh, Wendy, how many, why don't you tell our listening audience a little bit, we'll talk more about it tomorrow, but why don't you tell our listening audience a little bit about your story tonight? Sure, I'd be honored to. Um, I have three little boys. Um, my oldest is 14. He's autistic. And um, my middle boy is 10. And my baby's four. And um, they're confused. They want to come home. They're being held against their will. My oldest son, being autistic and violent, has been institutionalized in three, in three different institutions here in Southern California. And um, they have over-medicated him, chemically restrained him. Um, they, you know, it just, I, I know he shows signs of ataxia, because basically what the FDA dispenses about is poison, um, for these children, and these children are being over-medicated, and, I mean, even at a year old, um, giving these, um, psychotropic medications that are altering their, their brain growth mm. and causing brain damage, and I actually, um, spoke with a woman today on the phone, I, you know, yeah, like yesterday, um, Bill Fabrosius and, and the sidekick UG, and they called me just in the nick of time. I was kind of starting to have a little bit of a meltdown there because it gets overwhelming. Yeah. Well, we could do this. We got this. You know, and they called me in the nick of time. I mean, God has really good timing when it comes to that. And then Amen. today, Karen Maple from Vermont called me today. She had a little bit of a meltdown. I talked off with Chris, um, um, you know, with God's help. And, and she, her daughter, mm. her daughter, Alyssa, I'm having um, Karen call in to the show tomorrow while I'm on. Good. And Jules is on because her story, my story is pretty horrific, but her story, it just tops the stories. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It is horrific, unconscionable. Well, just, one of the things. It be illegal. Yeah. One of the things that I've found, Wendy, is... Uh, not only the extreme situation where Nancy Schaefer and her husband were brutally murdered, that's extreme, of course, but the other extreme are the mothers and the fathers who, who, who give up, who just absolutely give up because they fought, they've lost, they fought, they've lost. Many of them have lost everything, not only financially, but otherwise. Family has turned against them. Uh, they've assumed that, well, if CPS is involved, they must have done something wrong. And in so many cases, that's just not right. And so uh, I don't mind telling you, uh, I've gotten to the point of uh, 
just saying what's the use and giving up, but the Lord won't let me, and we're going to keep on fighting because I read the last chapter of the book, and we win. And uh, I believe we have another caller on the line with us. Again, caller, the rules are you do not have to identify yourself, but you're welcome to do so. So, caller, whatever you'd like to share, go ahead, please. morning prayer meeting, uh, buddy. Uh, I got your email today and uh, was going to make sure this was the right number tomorrow morning at 5, correct? That's correct. We will, this, this prayer line that's open right now is our, what we call CCC, Congressional Communications Channel, and it will be open tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., Washington, D.C. time. And uh, it will also be open at 8 a.m. Washington, D.C. time uh, on Friday. Now, that is, of course, here in California, 5 a.m. So if, uh, if you want to be on there, you've got to get up early out here. But that's tomorrow morning and the next morning. And we would welcome any of you uh, to come back and pray with us then. And when we do these television shows, folks, this is not just a television show. This is a congressional prayer conference. That is, we pray for people. And that's what this show is all about. Yes, it is published. Yes, it is documented. Yes, it is put up on the archive. In all aspects of everything, it is a television, and radio show. We're broadcasting right now all over the world on the Congressional Prayer Conference television network and Crusade Radio Network in California. And we do that on every one of our shows, but then we have other special prayer meetings all during the week. So, uh, Bobby, we would love to have you on uh, tomorrow morning. And as I said, that is at 5 a.m., tomorrow in California, and the rest of you. Now, Wendy, uh, let's get back to you for a minute. You have three boys, 14, 10, and 4. And how long has it been since they've uh, been with you? Wendy, are you there? Well, what happened? We had some problem like this this morning. I hope we're not having the same kind of problem. Are you there, Wendy? Well, how about you, Shorty? Are you there? Bob, are you there? Looks like I lost everybody. I don't know what's going on with this silly phone system. Well, I do know what's going on. Obama and them don't want us to be on here. Sundays are given in the words. 
So we want to make sure they know they're going to hell. They're not getting rewards when they die. They're going to hell for their rebellion against you and your second commandment. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything in heaven above, on the earth beneath, or the water under the sea. Help us get the message across, plus always preaching the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And only by his blood, only by your blood, Jesus, are we saved from hell when we die. Help us get all that across this Sunday evening. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Bobby. Uh, Wendy, are you still there? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me, Wendy? Can, can, I, be, can I be heard? Yes, go ahead. I, I was just saying, may God be with you and, you, um, and God's will be done in your endeavors, Mr. Bible. I appreciate that. Uh, keep us in prayer. Uh, Pastor Wiley Drake is, uh, I think, having a tour of the Hollywood area, as he has in times past, but uh, he's a very busy man. Lord, we pray for Pastor Wiley Drake. Uh, we had a great um, church, the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. Been there many times. Was there two weeks ago, Lord, before we hit the Grammys on the 15th, I think of what? Uh, uh, or no, it was the 7th or 7th or 8th, Lord. We hit the Grammys in Hollywood, but we went to Wiley's church that morning uh, while he was in Florida. Could you think that all actors are, are, are not of God at all? Uh, excuse me. Uh, Pastor Wiley, were you asking for any callers? Uh, yeah, caller. Or, 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 can you all hear me now? Okay, uh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, I think uh, the question was, do we think all actors are totally 100% bad or something like that? And that's not the case, but many of them are. Many of them have sold out, and uh, uh, I, I have... Because there's good ones out there. Yeah, there are good ones there, but unfortunately they're few and far between. And uh, I have a granddaughter that's in show business, uh, she's actually in uh, the uh, New York School of Theater as we speak, and and she's a godly young woman, a godly virgin, and uh, 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 has a great witness in Hollywood. But it's a tough place, no doubt about it. Oh, it is definitely a tough place to to um, you know have God right by your side because you know I, I can see how all the ungodly things are there. But me, you know, growing up in Southern Orange County in, in Southern California, you know, I, I dabbled in that myself when I was in junior high, you know, as, you know, per, you know, wanting a career. But it's because of the only ways you can get to the top that I, my moral compass wouldn't want me to do that I, that I decided not to um, make that my endeavor. Well, and, and like I said, my, uh, my grandkids, I've got several grandkids, a grandson and granddaughters that have been in the business. And in fact, the matter is, I'll just give a little testimony here <clears throat> for my family. Uh, my oldest daughter, Carla, is the one that has the daughters in showbiz. And during their career, if you will, when they were in showbiz, uh, she almost quit. She came home and said, Dad, I, I think I'm going to quit. I'm not going to do this anymore because they're asking my daughters to dress uh, a certain way and so forth. And, and she yeah, says, every, yeah. every time I turn around, I'm having a fight with the agent. And so finally, uh, she said, I, I'm just about to the point where I'm ready to quit. And I said, well, I'll pray with you and pray for you. And we did. And uh, then uh, a little time after that, she came home very excited because she said, Dad, I met a lady on the set today. And she told me what you need to do is not quit. What you need to do is become your children's own agent. Don't use worldly agents. Become their agent. And so she uh, agreed to that and did that. And so my daughter has been her children's agent. And so that way they don't have to fight with the agent uh, over dress code and so forth. And the lady who recommended that to my daughter was Mrs. Cameron, Kurt Cameron's mother. And, uh, oh, yeah, I know the Camerons. 
yeah. and she shared with my daughter, hey, I had the same problem. I was, she was about ready to pull Kate, uh, Kurt out of show business because of fighting with the agents, and she said, I'm not going to fight with them. I'm just going to become his agent. And so she became Kurt's agent, and, of course, he's been very successful and very godly and so forth. And uh, so the bottom line is is that Hollywood's a tough place, but it can be done uh, if you can hang in there. And uh, tomorrow's going to be a very exciting show because we were talking a while ago about uh, sort of getting at wit's end, you know, getting at the point to where you felt like, golly, what's going to happen? How can I hang in there? And you just keep on keeping on. I hope you, all you folks that are fighting CPS, will be a part of the show tomorrow. You'll not only hear yeah. more of Wendy's horror story, but you'll hear more of another horror story that ended up in living happily ever after uh, with uh, that gentleman's family tomorrow. Uh, they fought a long time, but they did win. Yeah. 